Today, I'm going to look back on 2022 and talk about the best books I read last year. I have selected 10 books to discuss in this video from a total of 99 books that I finished reading last year. I will not claim that these 10 books are necessarily better than any of the other books I read in 2022. They are simply the books that have left a more lasting impact on me because one way or another, I still think of these 10 books to this day. And that is the main criterion I used for selecting them. The 10 books I have chosen are so different that it is simply impossible for me to rank them. So I'm just going to discuss them in more or less a random order. Last year, I reviewed most of these books, so I'm going to leave links to those reviews in case you haven't watched them in the description box, where you will also find links to the books in the book depository so you can buy them if you're interested in reading them and if you want to contribute to support my channel. So let's start with the first book, which is Death in Venice by Thomas Mann. In the golden light of Venice, the city of dreams and illusions, Gustav von Aschenbach, a celebrated German author, journeys in search of inspiration. But as he sojourns in the city, his mind is captured by the image of Tazio, a fair youth of extraordinary beauty. And so begins a descent into obsession as Aschenbach's desire for the boy consumes him, leading him toward a tragic end. With its evocative prose and psychological depth, Death in Venice delves into the themes of beauty, desire, and the destructive nature of obsession. It is a tale of self-discovery and passion, a story that will take you to the charming canals of Venice, leaving a lasting impression on your mind. As the golden light of Venice fades and the city's illusions are stripped away, one is left to ponder the nature of desire and the cost of giving into it. Death in Venice is a haunting and melancholic exploration of beauty, desire, and the human condition. Now, the next book, The Magus, written by John Falls, is unlike anything else I have ever read. It is a labyrinthine journey into the realm of self-discovery and what it means to be human. The story follows Nicholas Earth, a young and ambitious teacher, as he accepts a position on a remote Greek island only to find himself ensnared in a game of deception orchestrated by the enigmatic and charismatic Maurice Conchis. As Nicholas delves deeper into Conchis's web of illusion and manipulation, he begins to question his own reality and uncovers hidden desires and passions he never knew existed within him. The novel is a labyrinth of emotions as Nicholas navigates the complexities of love, truth, and the human psyche, with its masterful use of symbolism, richly drawn characters, and vivid descriptions, the Magus is a true literary masterpiece that will take you to the sun-drenched beaches of Greece, making it an immersive reading experience. I would recommend the Magus to readers who enjoy literature that is thought-provoking, challenging, and open to interpretation, and also to those who enjoy psychological thrillers and philosophical fiction. Now, An Artist of the Floating World, written by Kazuo Ishiguro, is a subtle yet powerful story that takes us into the realm of memory, art, and once again, the human condition. The story follows Masuji Ana, an aging artist, as he reflects on his past actions and choices in post-war Japan and also grapples with the weight of his past. Through Ono's memories and reflections, Ishiguro explores the nature of memory, the role of art, and the impact of the past on the present. This novel is a subtle and nuanced exploration of the human psyche and the choices we make. Told with Ishiguro's signature, understated prose, restrained, and a focus on the inner lives of characters. I would recommend An Artist of the Floating World to readers who enjoy literary fiction and historical fiction. This novel is a nuanced and elegantly written examination of one man's life and the world around him. Readers who are interested in Japan's culture, history and society in the aftermath of World War II particularly would appreciate the novel's rich setting. It may also appeal to readers who enjoy introspective and character-driven novels. Now, my next novel is something completely different, which is All the Pretty Horses, written by Cormac McCarthy, which is a tale of youth and adventure set in the wild and untamed west of Texas and Mexico. This novel follows John Grady Cole, a 16-year-old cowboy, 
as he sets out on a journey to find his place in the world and to escape the constraints of his past. Through McCarthy's evocative descriptions of the landscapes and powerful and poetic prose, the reader is transported to the wilds of the West, experiencing the longing and sense of adventure of John Grady Cole. The novel explores loss, love, and the search for identity as John Cole faces the harsh realities of the world and the people he meets on his journey. All the Pretty Horses is a novel that drips with nostalgia, and I would recommend it to readers who enjoy literary fiction, westerns, or coming-of-age stories, as well, of course, as fans of McCarthy's work. Now, one of the books I loved reading last year but didn't review was The Gospel According to Jesus Christ, which is a novel written by the Portuguese author José Saramago. It was first published in 1991 and later translated into English in 1994, I can read Portuguese, so I own this copy in the original language, but you will find a link to the English translation in the description box for this video. Now, The Gospel According to Jesus Christ is a fictional retelling of the life of Jesus Christ, and it presents a highly controversial and unorthodox portrayal of Jesus and his ministry. The novel portrays Jesus as a human being with doubts, fears, and struggles. It also explores the relationship between Jesus and God, and raises questions about the nature of divinity and the purpose of religion. I am a fan of Saramago's writing, so I would read pretty much anything by him, but whether you have read anything by Saramago or not, I would recommend this book to readers who are interested in a different perspective on the life of Jesus Christ and are open to a more humanistic portrayal of the religious figure. I would also recommend it to readers who enjoy historical fiction and retellings of religious stories. However, it may not be suitable for readers who are looking for a traditional or religious perspective on the life of Jesus Christ. Okay, I love the next novel so much that I have read it twice, most recently last year. It is Don Cachemujo, written by the renowned Brazilian author Machado de Assis. It is a classic novel, first published in 1899. The story is told through the eyes of its narrator, Bento Santiago, who recounts his life and his relationships, with a particular focus on his childhood sweetheart and later wife, Capitu, and his best friend, Escobar. I love the novel's complex and nuanced exploration of jealousy, love, betrayal, and the nature of perception. Through Bento Santiago's voice, the author delves into the human psychology and the way in which our own perspective can shape our reality and our relationships. Although lesser known than the two big adultery novels of the 19th century, I think Don Cachemujo makes the perfect companion for Anna Karenina by Tolstoy and Madame Bovary by Flaubert. In Brazil, and not only, Don Cachemujo is considered a classic. I would recommend this book to readers who enjoy psychological and introspective novels, as well as readers who are interested in the literature of Brazil. Additionally, readers who are interested in themes of jealousy, love, and betrayal would also find this book very engaging. However, it may not be suitable for readers who are looking for a fast-paced or action-packed story, right? You know, I don't know about you, but I like reading big, sprawling novels from time to time, and last year I read a few of them, including The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. The Magic Mountain is a novel of ideas, right? It is set in the secluded world of a Swiss sanatorium. The story follows a young man named Hans Kastorp, as he travels to visit his cousin and then becomes embroiled in philosophical debates and introspection with the patients and staff at the sanatorium. Through man's evocative descriptions and rich characterization, we are taken to this microcosm of European society of the time where the characters represent the different ideologies and philosophies of the time. This novel explores time, illness, and the search for meaning and purpose in life. Huge themes. It is a profound exploration of the human condition once again. Who would I recommend The Magic Mountain to? Well, not everyone. I would recommend it to readers who enjoy literary fiction, and also those who are interested in existentialism, in the portrayal of illness in literature, and also the search of meaning in life. The Magic Mountain is not a light read, um, but it is for those who are interested in diving deep into a story. The Magic Mountain was a reread for me, 
And so was my next book, which is none other than The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. The Master and Margarita, what a tale it is. A melange of fantasy, satire and social commentary set against the backdrop of Moscow during the dreary days of Stalin. It is a work of art, a true masterpiece, a shining gem in the crown of 20th century Russian literature. It tells the story of the master, a writer who has been persecuted for his unorthodox beliefs, and Margarita, his faithful lover who will stop at nothing to save him. It is a story of love, sacrifice, and the triumph of the human spirit. Oh, how it will leave you breathless and how it will stay with you long after you have closed the book. It is a novel not to be missed, a true treasure of literature, believe you me. I would recommend The Master of Margarita to readers who enjoy literary fiction with elements of fantasy, satire, and social commentary. The novel is a blend of different genres. It's a love story, it's a story of friendship, good and evil, and the struggle against totalitarianism. It is a complex and profound book that explores the nature of good and evil, the role of the artist in a society, and the power of faith and love. Okay, I know I read both the classics, but I do read contemporary stuff from time to time, and the best, most recent novel I read last year was Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. I was very impressed by this novel, which is supposed to be the first in a coming trilogy. I must say that I have admired Franzen's writing since I read his breakthrough novel The Corrections back in the day. I enjoy his insightful explorations of contemporary society and the human condition. Franzen delves into the complexities of family dynamics, personal relationships, and the pressing issues facing our world today. I would recommend Crossroads and other novels by Jonathan Franzen to readers who enjoy literary fiction that deals with contemporary issues and themes such as family dynamics, relationships, and social issues. Franzen's writing is witty, insightful, and captures the complexity of modern life, I think. His novels often deal with the struggles of middle-class Americans and the ways in which their lives are affected by larger societal issues. Franzen is a skilled storyteller and his novels are a good fit for readers who enjoy well-crafted and thought-provoking stories. His writing is marked by realism, sharp wit, and psychological depth, painting vivid and relatable portraits of his characters. To me, he captures the nuances of human emotions, the intricacies of interpersonal relationships, and the constant push and pull of our individual desires and societal pressures. But do you know who was the best at psychological depth and sharp wit? That's right, Marcel Proust. And last year, I read The Whole in Search of Lost Time, Proust's seven-volume novel over as many months, between January and July. And it is one of the best reading projects I have ever undertaken. In the vast expanse of literature, there exists a novel of unparalleled intricacy and nuance, a literary masterpiece that delves into the very essence of memory and time. I, I speak, of course, of In Search of Lost Time, the magnum opus of Marcel Proust. With its intricate narrative and richly drawn characters, the novel transports the reader on a journey through the twists and turns of life. From the simple pleasures of a madeleine dipped in tea, to the profound musings on the nature of art and the passage of time, Proust's novel is a masterclass in storytelling. As we follow the narrator through the salons of Parisian society, we are given a glimpse into the very soul of humanity and the myriad ways in which we all struggle to come to terms with our own mortality. And yet, for all its contemplation of the fleeting nature of existence, In Search of Lost Time is a novel that endures a work of art that will continue to be read and revered for centuries to come. I, for one, want to reread it many times, but next time, I will not set up a schedule or anything like that. I just want to immerse myself in Proust's prose from time to time and read his words slowly, savor them, preferably aloud, which is the best way to read this novel, by the way. I would recommend In Search of Lost Time to readers who enjoy literary fiction and are interested in themes such as memory, time, and identity. In Search of Lost Time is a masterpiece of modern literature and he has an intricate narrative Proust manages to capture the nuances of human emotions and experiences here. It is a long and complex work. 
but it is well worth the time investment for readers who enjoy immersive and introspective stories. It is a good fit also for readers who appreciate literary classics and enjoy deep literary exploration. But please let me know the best books that you read in 2022 and I will see you very soon. Have fun!